Think about everything that downtown Minneapolis has been through. Changes in how we work, a period of unrest following a murder that stunned the world. But now, yeah. downtown Minneapolis is figuring out how to build back better for the next season. The Minneapolis Downtown Council will have to continue that work with a new leader, though. Steve Kramer, the current president and CEO, is retiring, but he told me he's excited about the next chapter for downtown as he looks back on how it's evolved. Steve Kramer has always had a thing for this city. You clearly care deeply about the city of Minneapolis. I do. The grandson of an Iowa politician, he says public service ran in the family, but there was always something special about Minneapolis. I think it came from being a young kid in Iowa who would have a family vacation in Minnesota every year coming through Minneapolis, going to Twins games. Kramer, a longtime city council member, ran for mayor in the 90s, and then after a few other stops, eventually landed at the Minneapolis Downtown Council, the link and advocate between the business community and people who work and play in the city. Our job as a downtown community is to make sure that people who are coming in for those things are having a great experience and want to come back for other things. Downtown, of course, has changed during Steve's career. When I came here 45 years ago, downtown really was a regional shopping destination. We're not that anymore. The physical landscape altered by things like new stadiums. Like U.S. Bank in 2016. We've also built a new park downtown, Commons Park over by U.S. Bank Stadium. Another great kind of asset and resource for downtown. And one of the criticisms, criticisms always has been, we just don't have enough green space downtown. So. Most of the work redone Hennepin. Major. We've also redone Nicollet. That was redone, a big project yep, for you. That was a big project, a lot of controversy. To pave a path to a more pleasant downtown. The public realm downtown is really important, and it's something that we've paid a lot of attention to. He says renovated spaces like PB Plaza aren't enough on their own. <laughs> They have to be activated with events. We really excel at that kind of thing. <laughs> Super Bowl, Final Four, Major League Baseball All-Star Game. I mean, those were all outstanding events. It really has been professional sports, theater, music, our great restaurants that are the leading edge of kind of recovery of, of downtown. What the fuck are you Recovery after a tough stretch of years filled with questions about safety. There is a reality, but the perception outstrips that reality, and so we have to have people come, come back and really understand it for themselves. <laughs> we invest millions of dollars provided by the business community in a wide range of safety programs, and we're a really good partner for law enforcement. We have a partnership with Hennepin County now where we literally have two social workers that are part of our outreach team. There have also been questions about viability with less workers in the office. Who does that hurt? We have less buying power coming into downtown. And that's noticeable here. Nine miles of Connecticut Sky. In the Skyway. Overall, we're just going to have fewer people downtown any given day, and that's going to have an impact on kind of retail and, and some of the restaurants. Some companies are packing it up and leaving downtown. Take AT&T, which just announced its plans to move to Bloomington. That's hard yeah. to ignore and probably a really big challenge for you and whoever comes after you. Right. Honestly, Aaron, our worst fears about companies exiting downtown have not been realized. Well, commercial vacancies are up. Kramer says residential ones are about where they should be. People still want to live downtown. The downtown residential population has just grown dramatically. 57,000 people live in greater downtown, and Kramer says the mayor wants to attract more. That's been one of the real strengths uh, of, of downtown. He thinks some vacant offices are ripe for apartment conversions. We're already seeing that happen with the North Star East building on 2nd okay. Avenue. I think for the most part, I hear you know, positive satisfaction with being in downtown. There are always concerns. Months shy of his retirement, Kramer will tell you he's optimistic. It's not going to be without its challenges going forward, but that we're, we're moving into a different phase of downtown. He sees vacancies as possibilities for new businesses. He'll tell you some companies are moving in and that fine dining spots are fully booked for dinner and that building on those victories will pull downtown into its next season. I'm betting on downtown. So uh, Kramer is retiring in December, to be clear. He's not gone tomorrow type mm -hmm. of thing. There will be a search process to replace him, and timing is sort of TBD on that. Uh, he seems definitely dedicated and loyal to this part of Minneapolis and, and creating, building it back to what it used to be. I mean, it's, we've been through a tough stretch, like we, we said. Have. Mike, you're a downtown resident. Yeah, it... Uh...
I mean, it's been a hard time, but it's nowhere near as hard as many people think it is when it comes to living and working down here. And I think that's a big problem. And I think they've addressed, or they at least realize that the downtown council does. But I'm sort of curious what other cities our size are doing, because we're all sort of facing similar problems, 100%. right? And perhaps, perhaps bringing somebody in who has experience in those markets in the future could help. It's a good idea. Yeah, we have a lot going for us too. We didn't get into. Uh, we have five Fortune 500s. Steve says that are yeah. in our downtown. That's unusual for a city our size. So yep. we have positives working for us as well.